Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Podcast Life. Hold on. What's up, everyone? Uh, it's fucking 10 o'clock. Uh, 9.43 to be exact. It's 9.43 on Wednesday. Uh, man, we're tired. We've been busting our ass. Uh, haven't had a chance to really get out and uh, record with anybody the last week and a half. Yeah. We've been just balls deep in the shop, man. It's, you know, it's fucking tiring. <laughs> you know how it is. You know. <laughs> you know, we have IMS coming up, which I know you've heard us talk about in the last couple pod- podcasts uh, this weekend coming up. And, uh, you know, um, it's, we're building our own bike, though, our shop bike. And, you know, any of you guys that are builders or painters out there know how hard and complicated it is just to fit your own shit in between all the customers and other obligations you got. So just fuck, man. We're just working all weekend, all night, trying to also keep our customers' uh, projects rolling. Um, we have another bike that we're working on that's going to be headed out to Ohio. This should be a pretty nice one. Uh, it's a 23-inch bagger, so not quite the biggest, but... Still has, like, stretched bags and stuff. Yeah, it's so. got fucking monster bags it's on got, it. What are those, TOL? Yeah, TOL bags. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, we with our, pro, our, our shop bagger, you know, we wanted to try to keep all the parts as far as, like, the paintable parts. We wanted to keep them stock, you know. We wanted it to appear stock seam stock look stock b stock you know it'd be cool for for basically people to see this bike if it comes out the way that i'm envisioning envisioning it <laughs> is that right <laughs> yeah <laughs> then my my goal is that i want people to be able to walk up to it at the ims show or at a parking lot or at any place that we go to and just feel like it's achievable like oh instead of looking at a bike that's going to cost you you know 20 30 40 thousand dollars to get that look and and whatnot then they'll be able to look at all these stock parts and what kind of cool shit you can do with what you get from the factory i'm i really dig it it's like a it's like a subtle custom kind of thing like the paint job's pretty wild the paint job's wild yeah that's for sure but i mean like everything else is just very subtle touches here and there like you know it's still technically custom but you might change you know this piece here and there yeah. just to kind of bring some life out of what's already there you know what i mean so it's a 17 and the 17 um road glides they came with chrome everywhere and uh, so we had to rip all that shit off and powder coat it and at that point i really wish i just would have got an 18 instead <laughs> so um but you know we needed to take a lot of parts off anyway to put a chain drive on it and um so it, it kind of works out in that favor. Yeah, we, we spent a whole like Saturday just taking the whole thing yeah, apart. Just getting it getting off. Getting it all ready for powder coat and all that Fucking stuff. Fucking the guy that did our powder coat, man, I I, I got to give this dude a shout out. He, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to tell you what he charged me and whatnot, but it's good. It, it's, it's good. You know, follow him on Instagram. It's MX underscore powder underscore coder. This dude, I dropped these things off on fucking Monday. I believe, yeah, Monday. Yeah, you dropped him off Monday. And he called. I mean, everything chrome on a bagger, other than the wheels and the front forks, because I had other plans with that. Everything that was chrome, crash bar, all the stock floorboards, all the engine covers, the everything. He had that shit ready the next day. Just amazing. It looks yeah, great. And it was great. There wasn't like piles of sand and mm-hmm. anything. And I everything mean, was clean. I really didn't even have to go over that. Honestly, many well, I put and, and, I, I put the rear fender together tonight. And everything threaded just fine. Yeah, you know what that's I mean? what I was saying. I was just saying, like, I really didn't have to go over and, like, dig anything out or, you know, do anything major like that. It was just, like, getting little things here and there. So, yeah. I mean, that was actually some pretty impressive work from It saved our ass in a lot and, yeah. and, and definitely, definitely saved our ass some time on that. Because right now, the bike is still completely apart. Uh, Jesse buffed pretty much, pretty much the whole all thing. the big shit except for the lids and the interfering. And a few mm-hmm. small pieces, but those probably they actually came out pretty nice, by the way. So sweet. I might. I think I got to run on the lid or something. I don't know. Sounds we'll see in the morning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you know we have uh, Paul from Lindall. You know, uh, if you saw the wheels that we posted on uh, Instagram um, yesterday, then those are the, those. He actually sent me the 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 CAD drawing of those wheels back in like November and December. And as soon as I saw them, I had to have them. So they're pretty dope. He, uh, we ended up doing a 21 inch front and an 18 rear. Um, 
even though you know I'd like to consider this bike to be a performance bagger you know I guess the idea with a performance bagger would be like an Olin's front suspension and some BST wheels yeah like getting way deep in there yeah I mean there's nothing wrong with that that shit's still dope but you know, I'm, I'm also building this bike to ride it, uh, you know, across country, which you can definitely do on a Nolan's front suspension. I mean, not not only that, but just back to what you were saying earlier, you want something that's still attainable for exactly. pretty much anybody, you know? You know, and uh, basically I want this to still be appealing to people that may still be into the big wheel stuff or they are and they're thinking about building something or doing something that's a little bit more um, everyday able. Yeah. <laughs> and, um you know, I tell people all the time, it's like, that suspension shit's great, man. But, you know, me as a rider, I I can't even, I don't feel like I can ride hard enough to... to make that worth it? Well, I can't even, I don't think I ride hard enough to even outride the suspension that comes on the bike from the factory. Yeah. Personally. You know, I, I mean, it's kind of like my pride right here. Like, I am a rider. No, don't, you don't definitely ride me. really hard. But at the same time like you know compared to like some of my friends that you know they just go into corners with no fear like i go into corner like okay judging it yeah, as you're going looking for sand and <laughs> yeah. gravel and potential <laughs> hazards that might put me on the side and yeah. and things like that so you know i think i i definitely i think before i take it to daytona by take i mean ride um i want to do the legends uh front and rear suspension i think that's going to probably be as far into that as I'll go. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I wanted the 2118 for the look, man, you know, and, and if you know, if you've seen any of the bikes I've ever built, I'm always a single front brake rotor kind of guy. I like showing yeah, off the wheel. I don't like dual rotors. And, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, well, it stops better. It's like, well, you know, I don't ride hard I mean, enough to need that to would stop be, Yeah, it would be that. more performancy. Yeah, definitely but. more performancy, but... I guess I'm building you're, you're a going, performance looking bike. Yeah, you're going for style and you're going for like an aggressive look, but you're not technically making it, you yeah. know, an aggressive riding well, bike. You know, like uh man, like I don't know if, have you heard like some of the numbers of the, of like some of the shit they're making for the the motors? Like it's uh What, the M8? Yeah, like supposedly I think it's Revolution Performance is making a a one Fuck, I could be lying. You could you were talking about this the other day. It was yeah. like some ridiculous horsepower. So like right? a one I want to say it's a 131 or 130 or some shit. It's supposed to be putting out like 140 horsepower bolt-on kit Jesus. that you don't have to bore the cases or any of that. So, I mean, I, I'm down. I'm fucking down yeah. for that. But I mean, the thing is, you know, it's the same thing with like some of the people that put out the 120 kits that are putting about 130 horsepower down. My only concern is, is like, have you guys, you know, put any miles on these like bikes that? yet? Like, are they as reliable? That's what I want. I don't want to drop the money and and get the labor done and all this stuff and then next thing you know i'm fucking sitting on the side of the road because you know i mean as cool as that sounds i don't really like logically that does not seem feasible to have that kind of horsepower and have it you know run like you want it to yeah you know what i mean but i mean fuck man these motors seem to be there's a lot of potential and seem to be yeah just so much potential with it yeah so i mean i don't know i'm i'm just chilling right now i'm gonna leave it alone until you know, my buddy Mark at Texas Performance, he he's going to he just picked up a new soft tail and so he's already like diving into what the possibilities are. And I trust his judgment. So if he yeah. if he feels like this it's good products then I'll go with it, but I definitely want to bump it up at least to the 114. Yeah. So that's definitely going to happen. I just I mean, don't know. I mean, that to me seems still doable though yeah. to take that anywhere, you know. And I think after that, man, honestly, I, I maybe a few little accessories here and there, but but as far as this weekend, the idea is that the way the bike looks is done. Yeah. You know, I might get some new gauges for just, you know, to kind of tie it all together, but the bike is done. And I ain't, I'm not fucking buying anything else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, I mean, fuck, man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I, I got these visions of riding it down the road and, and shit like that. And just vibing with it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's fucking, you know, I, I'm excited, man. It's, it's fun painting these bikes that don't, I mean, if you hold up the stock saddlebag to one of the TOL bags, oh my god, it's a world of difference. It's it's like you can paint my clear goes so much further, my mm. my materials go so much further. But I know I was like buffing the bags out today, and it's like it's been so long since we buffed any stock bags. Yeah, and I'm like that took me maybe 15 minutes, <laughs> like, <laughs> as opposed to like 30, 45 minutes on, yeah, exactly. on one bag. Yeah, you, know? you know, yeah, and it's like oh this spot, this spot. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's a uh, it's it's definitely not, I mean, and I think. 
I, I'm so used to painting the stretch stuff, you know, the stretch tank, bag, saddle co side covers, and, and rear fender that, you know, my style of paint or our, our style of paint has kind of always been that flow from one to the other. Yeah. And so That's going what... back to a stock tank and stock side covers and stock bags has made a big challenge of trying to create that sense of flow. Yeah. Without, with it still having, you know, its own vibe. Yeah, it's yeah. on. You know what I mean? It's 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 difficult, but I, I like it. I think it'd be cool. I mean, we definitely gotta, you know, between you guys and us, like after IMS, we gotta take, we gotta reclear a few parts and yeah. touch up some <laughs> stuff. So it is not perfect, but you know, it's it's getting the job done for. Yeah, for I mean, what it fuck is. it, dude. We uh, like I said, we're we just we paint. This will be the by the end of this month, which is tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> we shit. would have painted. <laughs> Four complete baggers. Yeah. Uh, and what else? Did we, I think it was just four it was, solid it was baggers. Four solid baggers. And uh, I think we did a couple we little. We did a couple. We did a helmet. Did we? I think so. I can't remember. I don't know. This month just seems like it's been going on for. It, it has seemed like a long ever. ass month, you know. But yeah, it's fucking. It's, it's weird, man. But you know, IMS, I'm super. You know what I think I'm going to be doing? IMS the whole time, honestly. What? It's checking out the BMWs and the KTMs. Yeah. I'm so into that Adventure shit right now. Adventure bikes, bro. Like, I've literally spent last night... I, I got home late. I wanted to go to bed early and get up early, but I couldn't sleep. So I YouTube binged, like, a couple different, like, across South America, across yeah, Europe like kind of things. Yeah, type shit. You know, like, and... And then I started like looking at BMW's website and started looking into getting like a GS twelve hundred and How stuff much like are they that. Running? They're not that bad. They're like the base model is like sixteen grand. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. So That's I'm like, fuck. <laughs> at first I was like, man, because the ones I were seeing always they all already had all like the uh, the bags and shit on them and all the adventure yeah. shit. So those ones are like twenty five grand. So the sixteens are like, or the, the they're 16 bare. Grand one, it doesn't have bags or anything like that. It doesn't that. have it, but I mean, obviously you can put them on there. So I feel like yeah. you could probably get some aftermarket shit that at a better rate than the BMW stuff. Is it gonna last? Yeah, fuck yeah. Get some Pelican riding? bags. Oh, I think I honestly think the adventure riding for me is. First off, I don't need one now. I'm just looking into it yeah. and trying to understand that world of motorcycling right now so i'm not Before like gonna buy dipping one your, dipping your toes in them yeah but my 100 percent goal is in five years to be able to do some real like two three four month travels right. out of the country on a bike i mean that's the only logical way to grow in what you're already doing because you're already going you're taking a week and going across the country you know our country so i mean yeah logically the only way to go is where you're headed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there's no, there's no, like, you're going to get sick that's, of going across our country yeah, that's at some the point. Next, that's the and next you're gonna step. And you are going to be like, well, fuck this. So, yeah, of course. And I think, you know, getting into the Dynas and the FXR has got me kind of like to where I would look at bikes that were, had taller suspension and, and bags that are like touching yeah. the ground. And then, so it, I fell in love with those looks. And now I can look at an adventure bike and be like, not that so shit bad. looks pretty yeah. fucking dope you know what i mean so i'm pretty excited it'd be cool but yeah dude i'm i'm fucking on it right now and then danger dan had a couple people on he's his podcast a, he's he's had like three or three people on there now i think yeah that, that's done like that adventure does the riding and shit like that and i follow all of them now like patty rides he's yeah. he's got a really cool ass instagram uh fuck. i don't think the marcus really best has an instagram but that dude's know. stories he's the one that got me wanting to go down to the bottom of south america and back. yeah and then i watched the i watched the, a youtube thing and i wish i could reference it right now but this kid like alone from connecticut just jumped on a little piece of shit kawasaki because he was breaking down all the time <laughs> and he just rode from from not because it's a kawasaki but just because yeah. it was a piece of shit itself he rode from connecticut all the way down to uh panama and back alone all through mexico both sides of it dude's got some balls yeah and i mean from from a lot of the research i've been doing a lot of people are saying that it's not as like hectic yeah. as people think but i could be talking out of my ass right now he, i really don't know honestly he's probably one of those guys that go into corners no fear yeah <laughs> he's not looking for dirt <laughs> he's <Yeah>. just going <laughs> so yeah so that's kind of been what's what's on the psyche the last couple of weeks here but yeah you know i miss man i, I think it was, i think it's gonna be fun i'm looking forward to seeing all the homies out there and and uh you know, Paul from Lindahl is going to be in town this weekend, and we're actually going to sit down with him Monday 
to give you next week's podcast. Actually, next month in general is, I think, some heavy fucking hitters. Yeah, it'll it'll be dope. Uh, <laughs> back to what you were saying earlier, though. Which one? Uh, you were talking about adventure riding, you know, just now. And I'm thinking, like, man, every time the shop has ever been super swamped and we've been busy out of our, like, we have no free time, the first thing you ever want to start talking about doing or imagining is, like, riding far as fuck. Like, yeah. You're just like, I want to go. I want to leave. I agree. And I just, I think it's fucking, I think it's funny. Like, I just, I just had an epiphany that every single time we've ever been super busy, that's your first reaction to anything is just like, well, I'm leaving. <laughs> well, I think it's kind of natural because you get so, I mean, we get so overwhelmed with work. Yeah. And, you know, we'll work three, four, five, six weeks straight. And it'll usually be for an event like a Giddy Up or a Sturgis or, yeah. or something like that. So you're kind of like putting in all this time and then, at the end of this tunnel is that that open road light. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just fucking like super, it's super cool, you know? Yeah. But fuck, I mean, if we don't, if right now it just sucks like trying to, we have so much shit going on as it is trying to fit this, our shop bike bagger in the mix. That's what's making this so difficult, it honestly. It is, 100%. If we weren't doing that right now, everything would be fucking smooth. Yeah, we'd be going home and just like chilling, yeah. watching TV. Playing video <laughs> games, you know. Yeah, right. But, you know, <laughs> we have to fit this thing in, and we got to get it done now because next month we definitely can. And pretty much there's no, no end for the rest of the season for right. us. Right. You know, it's, either, it's... It's a good problem to have. I mean, it's a good problem, but, you know, we won't be able to... I mean, because every month we got somewhere going. I mean, okay, so... Mm-hmm. We're going to have to start, like, picking and choosing what shows we really want to go to. I really want to go to all of them, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. There's really not one. Every time <laughs> there's a show going on or an event or a rally or a run that's taking place and I'm not at it, I literally feel like I'm missing out on something. Yeah. I just, I really just want to make it, like, if, if I don't make it to anything else this year, I want to make it to at least Giddy Up and Raw Rally for sure. And, yeah. and probably Lone Star. I just feel like it's not fun really down there, like, unless you're really drunk. I just like the bonfire on the beach kind of shit. And yeah, hanging it's out cool. With like that's what I mean though. It's cool if you go down there with other people. But if you're going down there, and it's just like you and like one of your friends. I don't think it'd be that. Yeah, you that need three dope. people for yeah. it to be a, a party. legit punny uh, party. <laughs> <laughs> legit punny. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, two hey. people. It's just awkward. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, yeah. Talking about uh, back to what we were talking about, uh, Lindall. Yeah. And so, all that. so Paul will be in town, and uh, you know. He he's barely finished up these wheels. I just got a text. He's overnighting them, uh, so we'll have him. Oh, so so it is all good. We're yeah, all so good. Cool. Ho- fingers crossed. <laughs> praying to all. Hope he's gods. not lying. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. So, but but man, he he fucking outdid himself on that job. You know, those wheels look sick. It's gonna really make this bike. And then um, we're gonna sit down with him, man. He's a he's a fucking dope dude. I mean, he's got so much cool shit to talk about. I haven't actually got to meet him in person yet, so yeah. I'm kind of excited about meeting him. And then literally, literally, as soon as we get done talking with him, we have to come home, pack the truck, and we're driving to Northern Cali. Yep. Which we have absolutely no time to do right now. Absolutely but not. For you guys, <laughs> and for the sake of this bagger we just painted last month, this month, whatever. Honestly, it's mostly for you guys. Pretty much. <laughs> So the shop, I do a lot of paint work for a shop called Dirtbag Cycles, and I have a lot of customers in NorCal in general. And um, we finished up a bike for him, and I have it all boxed up and ready to ship. And then, you know, he had, he said he had another bike for us. And, you know, then I started talking with my buddy Jay from Fab 28 mm-hmm. and lined it up with him. So basically, we're just going to go ahead and deliver this bike. We're going to stop and see Jay. We're going to record a podcast with him, which will be fucking... If it's anything like the conversation that me and him had when we rode to California last year, it's going to be badass. <laughs> Straight up. I mean, I walked out of this dude's shop ready to fucking start a YouTube channel and just fucking... Conquer the world. Conquer it, you know? Yeah. And Jay's going to hook us up with the Kraus, I think is how you pronounce it. And we're going to sit down with... I can't pronounce the guy's name. I'm not even going to try you're really bad at this. I, I'm not. I don't. I don't talk publicly very often. <laughs> so, um, and then actually, believe it or not, we're gonna be linking up with uh, Paint Huffer. Yeah. Uh, I believe his name is Brian. He's gonna be up in NorCal at the same time, so we're gonna sit down with him and and for all you painter guys out there, you're probably gonna really want to hear the shit that we're gonna be talking about. Just based on the stuff that on the conversation me and him had on the phone, it's gonna be fucking really dope. 
Are you basing all of these on phone calls? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we hope that next month, February, we're going to try to release five podcasts. And that's what we're going to try to do and try to keep that rolling for you, you know, as, as much as possible. The hard thing about right here is that, you know, we're trying to catch people when they come to town or when we can go see them when they're close to here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously once we start doing some of the bike trips, we'll start linking up some podcasts within the trips. But, you know, we want to bring you some good shit. We want to bring you something that you want to hear, something you can take from, you know, like, you know, something. <laughs> like inspiration or ideas or even lessons or anything like that. Just something. Just, we want you to fucking check it. Want to And hear honestly, it we're and... trying to, we're trying to stay away from like phone call podcasts. Not yeah. that, not that that's bad, but just, I, I think it's, there's something about a conversation face to face that you yeah. just, you just wouldn't get through a phone. You know what I mean? 100%. So that's kind of the, the reasoning behind why we're driving all over the fucking world. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've already kind of talked with a few people that, that I'm going to try to link up in Daytona. Yeah. Link up with in Daytona and, uh, you know, just try to bring some good shit, you know, uh, bring you something that you're going to want to hear, just keep you informed of what's going on. And, you know, we'll probably do this like what we're doing now and just kind of give you kind of an insight of what we're doing. Yeah. And what we got going on. Cause even though that we do have this podcast, we still have a job. <laughs> You know, we still have this podcast. Definitely takes time, though, out of, every, yeah, out of everything I mean, we're doing. So it's really just a sacrifice. I mean, it's a sacrifice. Everything we're doing right now is sacrificing time. You know what I'm saying? Like just even going out to California and, and doing this podcast and all this shit. It's like, I, I want to say we're doing this because we like it. I love it, but also, <laughs> you know, we want it to grow. We want it to. We want it to do a lot of things, but you know, we're just. Right now, we just want to bring some good content, so we're gonna keep trying to do that. We did a, uh, we did get super fucking drunk in the garage. I think we should release that still. I don't think that's good to release. I, they might may never listen to us again after that. <laughs> but it was oh, fun. Oh man, we had that was a really good time. I yeah. have, I had not laughed that long, that hard in a long ass fucking that time. That was dude. fun. I woke up the next day and my stomach was sore from fucking <laughs> laughing. That shit was hilarious. Definitely was fun. I mean, you should just release it and warn everybody that they're drunk and be like, maybe yeah, you should listen to this. What if that's the first podcast drunk. someone listens to of us and it's like a whole bunch of obnoxiously drunk dudes? Probably that's, say, that's probably the same thing that artists who released their first album are thinking and are like, what if that's the first thing they ever hear like eight years down the line? And they're like, <laughs> they're gonna think I'm terrible. But when, when we're don't. working in the shop one day, we just need to we just need to plug it into the Bluetooth and, and listen to it. Just see how annoying it is. Yeah, and see yeah. if we like it and it's editable. <laughs> editable. Then we'll run it. But for now, let's we're gonna focus we on. We can just this. put some bleeps in there if there's something that really just doesn't need to be heard. Yeah. I don't think we really got that bad though. I don't I don't think we were getting too crazy with Well the problem is that we I mean were, we weren't I talking was, shit. Yeah, I was pretty drunk, so I don't really remember all the stuff, but my wife, you know, she said, You're not gonna release that, right? Because she was out here hanging out with us too. And I'm like, I guess I'm not, nice, since you were sober enough to know what we were talking about. I I was pretty I mean, okay. I'm not gonna say I was sober, but I mean I wasn't as drunk as you guys. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the better of two evils. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, man, uh, it should be, I don't know, this should be going good. We, we recorded a couple others. Like we, we recorded one with our buddy Zombie Mike, but the audio was kind of bad. It was really bad. It really was. And, uh, you know, so we'll probably get with him again. Maybe get with him this weekend. He's supposed to be in town for IMS, so we might sit down with him again. We'll yeah. just see what happens. But, you know, once again, man, if you guys are going to be in Dallas, man, come out to IMS and find us. Uh, I'll probably have to work a little bit Saturday in the shop, but I plan to be there from at least 1 or 2 p.m. to the close on Saturday and all day Sunday and all day Friday. Um, man, if you see us, man, fucking just shoot the shit, hang out, talk. Give us some, if you listen to the podcast and you're there, give us some opinions, man. Like, what Yeah, do you like some honest ones, not like... Oh man, it was pretty good. But be like, hey, you know the sounds kind of off, or hey, Jesse's annoying, or hey, you know whatever. You guys are fucking idiots. Yeah. You know, or hey, there's too much mouth noise. I don't, I don't want people breathing like that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it, it should be good, man. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. It's only fucking January, and we're already done a bunch of shit already. So. Can't feel my feet. Yeah, I'm fucking tired. But yeah, so let's uh. 
you know, keep keep in mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind what? Just keep it in mind. <laughs> keep it in mind. You know, share it too, man, if you can. Like, if you guys care to. I mean, I know some of you painter guys out there probably don't want to share our, our Instagram page because you don't, you know, it's conflict of interest. But, yeah, you know, I appreciate the guys of you that do do it, you know. And, and you know, I, I want to have a lot of painters on here because I want the world to kind of, from different areas, to kind of have your insight of what it's like painting in different areas and parts of the country and different style painters so i'm bringing you all that shit that's what i want to do and i want to promote all you guys because there's enough fucking yeah. work for all of that's us that's kind of like there. what homer was saying though you know like yeah. every every painter's got their own kind of style so i mean you're, you're not you can't really say that you know say if one of if a painter shares your page you can't really say he's gonna lose business from that because definitely people, not people are know? gonna people are gonna like his style if they like his style exactly and yours if they like yours you know what i mean you know, and that's and, and I mean, we probably should have like started a whole another Instagram and Facebook for this podcast thing, but I mean, we have a decent enough following on our on our Fast Life Garage page that we want to try to capitalize off you guys that we already have. Yeah, so I mean, it's just a huge pain in the ass to try to go through and get all these people to follow. I, us. Yeah, it's just. I pain. mean, after after a certain point, if if we get enough people interested in the podcast and say we did make a, a fucking page, you know what I mean. Then it would be easier to to throw the flow from yours to there, but I mean, honestly, at this at this point, there's no reason at yeah. all. And you know, we Jesse and I both, man, we've been really talking about it, and at some point in this year, we're actually gonna be about it, uh, trying to get some actual video content footage of some sort to put yeah. on YouTube. I, I mean, really, that, I would love to do that. It you, you you know and I've had a lot of people mm. tell ask us or send us uh, send me messages on the Instagram and and whatnot asking like hey you guys want to do a video page and or videos with the podcast and do we want to absolutely yes even my mom was like yes. you guys got videos yet <laughs> just hating like you know but no. and I try to tell everybody it's like our podcast is really geared towards the guys and people out there that are actually working with their hands and has have to concentrate yeah. And they're sick you know? of listening to the same shit every day. Yeah, you know, and, and the video stuff, we, we'll get stuff going, but, you know, it takes a long time to make a video. For a one-minute video, they say it's about an hour's worth of footage. Yeah. And then who knows how long of editing to make it work. Eh, I mean, if we keep it simple, like, you know, like some Joe Rogan shit, I don't I don't think it'll be that hard. I mean, I think if people were going to watch our videos, they probably want to see, like, shit actually taking place, though. Like, whether it be work in the shop or... Or like, like. Okay, what do you mean? Well, I mean, do you think if we had a video camera playing right now that they would really want to watch us looking? I mean, people watch Joe just sitting in there in the chair. Yeah. I think he has like the he can like bring some up on the internet and put it on the screen. We can't do all that shit. <laughs> we got an internet right here, man. Yeah, but we can't. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, we can. It's a MacBook. It can do anything. <laughs> it's a two thousand dollar MacBook. Twenty three hundred dollar MacBook. <laughs> I had oh, to take a helmet paint job loan oh out to God. get it. Oh, my God. I know. Thanks, Jetty. <laughs> For real. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's man, we've, it, it, we've invested quite a bit of money in this shit so far. <laughs> yeah, actually, for, for being a startup uh, podcast. Yeah. And then we still got to get more shit, so. Mm. We got to get it. Uh, what is that? What was it? The Zoom? The Zoom. Zoom. Z O O M. Yeah, so I'm going to pick up a Zoom for when we do the riding. Like when I ride to uh, Daytona, uh, my intention, I haven't talked with him yet, but I'm pretty sure he'll sit down. I, my intention was to ride from here down to Patrick at Royal T Shop, shoot the shit with him, stay That's the night. In New Orleans. Yeah, right? in New Orleans. And then um, I spoke with my buddy Jeremy from Lucky Strike Designs. He's going to be in Daytona, so we're going to sit down with him. I'm gonna try to talk to as many people in Daytona as possible. Yeah. Um, just bring a lot of. Uh, just bring as much back, and then you know, if yeah. I get if I sit down with 20 people, we'll release 20 fucking podcasts in one month. You know, it's it's just or we'll spread it I out through the month and a half. Yeah, don't don't release 20 podcasts in one month. That's a terrible idea. It might not be. Can't believe you just said that. <laughs> what? Well, if we get the, with you. if we get the content, I want to get it out. I don't want to like record a podcast and then wait like six weeks to drop it, and then like we might be talking about current events. Yeah, and now it's all super past tense. So well, that's that's kind of just like being at that point when you have that many, you have to be 
like a fucking photographer and you can take 20 pictures of the same subject but you can only put out five you know what i mean well don't you know what the fear is though especially if i'm talking to a bunch <laughs> of painters is is like somebody's gonna get mad that no you didn't no no like it? well that it's just sometimes they we can't release it if it's shitty stuff you know? right exactly but the the main thing is like well what if, if i was to talk to 20 dudes this weekend or just five dudes five painter dudes or five painter people mm-hmm. how close is that conversation going to be in each one without having any kind of time in between oh it's going to be almost exactly the same every every conversation it I, I feel if, like it possibly you, well, will. I this don't, is what I was thinking. Like, if you're if you're running around and and say you go to Daytona and you do you know however however the fuck many podcasts you're talking about, all of that's going to be so close together that I feel like the same things are going to be on your mind because you're going to be at the same same places doing the same things and this, those people are going to want to talk about that same shit too. You know what I mean? So what about this theory? So like. How we did it with Homer when, you know, we gave part of the podcast to, to let Homer tell us who he is and how we yeah, got to where he story, is. Kinda. And I think that by allowing that to take place, it, you know, because I'm actually paying attention to the conversation at hand. Right. It creates natural conversations and natural questions based on his path to here. Yeah. So I feel like in a sense, there's, there's that 50-50 chance that, yeah, I might be able to talk to five different painters in the same day and possibly... It be relatively different enough. Yeah. I mean, if depending. Yeah, I mean, it could be different. Yeah, if you, if if they talk to you and they tell you stuff about their their life story or whatever, and then you take something from that that's specific to them and go off on that. But I mean, that's really up to your podcast skills. Yeah, I need to get <laughs> like some mad fucking interviewing skills. Yeah, dude. That's what. That's sort of in the. I, I was actually watching a podcast uh, about Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was talking about how he. Uh, learned how to tell like you know he's good with like the science shit and explaining yeah. all this stuff so he learned how to give all this information in like soundbite time periods so like explain so say they were like you know what was the creation of the universe and he'd just be like you know well the big bang and this and that and that and then just straight up like fucking clear answer and there's no questions after that and he practiced that and he practiced that like with the the idea in mind that just like interview skills, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. So, all of that shit is attainable, of, of course, and, yeah. and practicable. You just have to fucking understand how to practice it, I guess. Well, you know, like because I mean, when you think about doing interview skills, it's like, well, uh, what do well I, Dan, what do Dan I said it the best way. He said that you know when you're interviewing somebody, the key to it is to actually pay attention to what the person's saying. Yeah, that way you actually can have input that's relevant to the conversation ahead. Yeah, and which plus, obviously like plus i said an interest in it's going to be well like you know, i said the whole thing. point of this co- this podcast is that i love to talk <laughs> so yeah. it's like I, i'm just do it i'm just trying to do what i've already liked to do <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but i'm trying to also let other people talk <laughs> so yeah that's that's where you could say you're trying to develop interviewer skills yeah, i suppose but, so that that could be what you need to focus on is just you know, more of listening mm-hmm. into what other people are saying, which, I mean, that's something anybody in the fucking world could practice on because I don't think many, very many of us really do yeah, I listen. think everybody's ready to, like, jump. Jump, you know, and that's what's cool. That. That's what's cool about podcasts is it's like you have to sit there and listen to it and you know you can't put anything in there, so you just kind of take take it for what it is instead of, I think know, that's why, to, like, I feel like I learned so much from listening yes. to podcasts because, it's, you know, you you heard that old saying, and I'm probably going to murder it right now. It goes... <laughs> You know, if Murdered. you're talking, you're not learning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Meaning that if you're talking, you're not listening to what... Exactly. So when you're listening to a podcast and you're listening to what people say and you're getting their full thoughts and their full range of ideas laid out in front of you... And you're not sitting there trying to think of like a rebuttal. Yeah. And you're not like, oh, you're not I'm going to tell them. Like, yeah. I'm going to shut them down. <laughs> you're just, because at that point, you're literally just waiting for him to to fuck up or give you no, a second find, find like you think he's about to be done and you're like oh yeah you need to jump in yeah like a little window of opportunity exactly yeah so, i think that's what's good about podcast man is it's like you know without a doubt you can't butt into that conversation so i mean you just kind of you take it for what it is you know mm-hmm. what i mean and you listen to it and you know you you make your thoughts in your head of course but i mean 
you don't you don't argue the point and then you let it go. It's almost like a form of meditation, as weird as that sounds. Yeah, I can is see if, that. If uh, you know, like a part of meditation is just like having these thoughts that'll you know naturally appear in your head and just understanding them and letting them do their thing. You know what I mean? Not just dwelling on them or dwelling on the things you want to say or do. And so maybe maybe way deep down psychologically we're just all meditating while listening to podcasts and we don't even know do way <laughs> Dude, too deep. i'm just fucking blowing you know, I'm, I'm trying to listen but i'm i'm, I'm, I'm making dude <laughs> i'm trying to give you the interviewer skills right now okay, man okay <laughs> but yeah i mean podcasts are podcasts are great and i'm i'm i mean i love doing them i like talking too i don't really talk that much cuz I mean, you, you talk more when you're like when you actually know who we're talking to because like when yeah. you, we sat down with Mike and this the drunk cast. Oh, dude, the drunk cast was. Dumb. You know, it's like <clears throat> I don't know. I, I think it's very respectable because like when you we sat down with Simpson, you weren't like constantly trying to like make jokes, and make shit. jokes. Yeah. I mean, you were being very respectful, but at the same time, it's like once you've been around some of this or been around some of these folks, and you'll if you're paying attention as well, then you're going to develop the questions and right. the, and the comments and that that as well. So I think it's fine, you know. Somebody's got to talk more, but I guess that's. Just I mean, you good. you always know the questions to ask when it comes to things like that too, because I, I don't want to make myself sound dumb. So I'm just kind of sitting there and I, listening. I constantly you know feel what like I mean? I'm saying. <laughs> you know, uh, everybody says that when you do these podcasts, whether you're on the interviewee or interviewer side, yeah, you don't really want to go back and listen to yourself because you'll be so critical on how you sound yeah. and oh, what yeah. you say, of course. And how you come off and. It can it can that wreck was, your that brain. Was, that was definitely a, a thing we talked about when we first even started, like the first couple we recorded that were just yeah. kind of like practice. You know, we we were talking about that. It was a, it was just I think that's a normal natural thing with anybody. If you listen to yourself, period, mm-hmm. you're gonna self critical. Yeah, because then you start. Yeah, you're just 100 percent self conscious in what you know yeah. how you sound and and. Uh, I mean, that's applied anywhere for sure. Yeah. Like, no matter what your talent or craft is, if you're not your worst critic, then you're probably not going to really grow. You know what I mean? At some point, you just got to have a pair of balls. At some you point, just got to be like, like fuck, fuck it. it. <laughs> you know, I always say, like, you know, those the people that are always like, oh, you know, I'm who I am. I don't give a fuck what anybody likes. Or I build what I like. I don't do what mm-hmm. other people like. But I'm like, you know, I want you to like me. <laughs> yeah, straight up. Like... I don't want you to like. I'm hate a people me. pleaser, you know what I mean? Like, fuck, I don't. I'm not just trying to be a dick, and you know. But yeah, so I don't really. That's kind of just why it's like whenever we're doing podcasts with a lot of those people, it's like, especially if I've never met them, I'm not just gonna be sitting there and trying to make lighter, make jokes of whatever's going on in their life. Yeah, I'm tr- still trying to fill them out. <laughs> you know, I don't want to make a joke about somebody's mom and then they try to fight me mid podcast or something. <laughs> Because it's surprising how many people are still offended by things like that. Like your mom jokes? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Some fucking sissies out there, basically. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I have no idea how long we've been going. Probably 30 minutes, maybe an hour. Who knows? I don't know. So, we should probably start wrapping this up, huh? Yeah, new to... Make sure we get it all out there. Yeah. Uh, we're fucking tired. We're busting <laughs> our ass. We're trying to give you some podcasts. We're trying to get our customers taken care of. This is bullet points. Yeah. yeah. I'm just I'm going Summary. over what I know we had to talk about. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of badass guests coming next month. And I think we actually got some sponsors coming on next month as well. Because uh, this shit ain't free, by this the way, for us. not free at all. Um yeah and we're actually we're we're losing quite a bit of money <laughs> doing this <laughs> pretty quickly <laughs> you know uh dan he's been telling me about the patreon thing which uh i think we'll eventually do you know yeah um i i want to i want to know that i can provide you guys yeah. consistently with stuff you're gonna Definitely like get some more stuff before out i'm there. like hey you send me a dollar you know or yeah. send me anything but no like like the the patreon thing is a super it's smart, man. Like, like Dan put it like this. And if you if you listen to Danger Dan's podcast, and and if you're not one of his Patreon Patreon, Patreon. subscribers, you should really check it out. I mean, think about it. He asks. He puts out right now. He's putting out fucking. 
he put out three podcasts last week. Yeah, he put out a lot. And so if he's putting out three, two to three podcasts a week, that's, you know, 10, 15 podcasts a month almost, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and he says you can, you on the Patreon, you can literally subscribe and just give him a dollar a month. One dollar. And, I mean, the way that helps is that when you get enough people, that one dollar can mean a lot. You know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, you can do more. You can do five, 10, 20. If you think about it, if you think about how long you spend every day listening to this podcast or listening to a podcast, yeah, you know, for the whole month. Like, say, say for instance, we did it and, you know, the Patreon and, and we're providing you with five podcasts a month, you know. That's a lot of podcasts. <laughs> and you are a subscriber for $1. Yeah. You're like paying 25 cents or 20 cents a podcast. That's not bad. I mean, think about I it. I mean, if you think about the amount of time we've taken out of what we're doing and out of working and out of our lives to do this, then yeah. Yeah. Or I'm I mean, like, I'm working for 25 cents every three hours. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? exactly. <laughs> no, but it's a good idea. But, you know, before before we got we get into that part where we uh, set all that up, we want to make sure that, that, that you're subscribing to something that, that we can provide great content, uh, interesting content. Yeah, and stuff like, like that this right us. now is kind of like a trial period for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like this Once week. Once we get better, uh, like this week. I mean, the idea is that we want you to subscribe and you be able to have guests like Lindall and Fab Twenty Eight yeah. and Kr- Kraus. I think it'd be way easier to pull guests like that more often and more frequently. Well, yeah, because if we had more clout with the podcast. You well, know what it, I mean? that's the idea. So if, if we did get to a point where we had the Patreon and we had enough money, then it would actually be able to fund. Which, that's what we would do with them. I don't trust me. We're not trying to get money to go pay our fucking light bill. But yeah. the idea is that we can get enough... Check out my sneaks. <laughs> enough money. Yeah, I'm be on the podcast. Patreon bought Check my out these Jordans I just... <laughs> yeah. Y'all bought me. Thank you. You know, No, it'd be like for us to put gas in the bike and keep... And buy better equipment and uh, and get to like... Maybe buy some gas station food. <laughs> yeah, some fucking <laughs> something. Some beef jerky. But, you know, a lot of these people that I want to sit down with, you know, a lot of painters, I know a lot of bike builders and a lot of big time shop owners that I know that I know a lot of people. I'm not trying to toot any horns here, but I know a lot of fucking people. (laughs) I'm kind of a big deal. Just so you know. No, I'm just saying I know a lot of people (laughs) and, you know, fucking, you know, Brian Clock is not going to jump. In a fucking airplane and come to Dallas just to sit in on a podcast with us. So but we I got to go to him. Airplane and go to him. <laughs> oh, right. I can go see him. Brian Clock's uh, owner of Clockworks, by the way. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so so yeah. So I mean, if we get to a point where we have enough money coming in every month, then we'll be able to go out and do more and bring more content to the table here. And that's kind of the goal. But you know, right now, you know, this trip to Cali that we're gonna take next week, that's on us. We're just trying to provide you with some good shit. Mm-hmm. Um. Give me that good. Yeah, that good shit. Uh, yeah, so, you know, fuck it, man. Fuck it? I think that's it. Uh, we really don't have a whole lot going on other than the... Than all the other stuff we have a whole lot of. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot <laughs> going on, but it's not very that, that very interesting, so... Yeah, I guess we should end it, because, I mean, I've got a couple of Tinder messages to check and stuff, so... <laughs> <laughs> all right, well... You'll hear from us next week uh, for sure. Look for it on Tuesday. Uh, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube page, which I have no way to tell you how to get to it right now. I don't even know what the fuck it's called. It's just uh, the Fast Life Garage. A, you can if you type in the Fast Life Garage. Yeah, and then, but it's Fast Life like all one word and then yeah, garage. Yeah, I don't. I don't yeah, really you don't know how to use like grammar and stuff for so, sure. Yeah. Uh, keep following us on uh, Instagram, uh, the Fast Life Garage on Instagram, um, Facebook. You know all that good shit. Just yeah do what you can to help us and we're gonna keep doing what we can to provide yeah top Hope. shit for you top shit hopefully we're gonna check out this drunk cast this week and we might release we might it. release don't it. know we but. might really we should probably if we do we should release it with this no we like the to, same week i'm li- releasing this one right now tomorrow i know Shut i'm up. talking like this all right week. see you guys later <laughs> bye later